Before this video starts, I just want to ask you guys a question. Leave in the comments what your record for most times this happening to you in a row in a ball drop. Like, ball drops take forever. And literally, in the last game I played, this happened four times in a row. It took two minutes for one single ball drop because it just kept resetting. So, I just want to know how common this is because I don't play much triple threat online. So, I have no idea how common that is. And that's the first time something like that's happened to me. But, uh, yeah. So, anyway... That's a kind of strange way to start the video, but if you guys could leave it in the comments, that would be great. But anyway, now let's get on to it. What is going on, guys? DBG here. In this video, we are going to be doing a gameplay with the Diamond Yanis Antetokounmpo card. So this Diamond Yanis is, without question, going to be one of the best cards in NBA 2K20. My team, I don't think anyone is doubting that. This card is going to be unreal. So this Yanis card is in the Spotlight Isaiah Thomas packs for... I don't know what reason. I don't think anyone knows what reason. And is he currently better than... I think he is. I think it was like... I have Giannis Heat Check, don't I? Yeah, he's currently better than Heat Check. The Heat Check was 97 overall last week. But he's 97 offense, 98 defense overall. Which means, obviously, as far as diamonds go, he is going to be one of the best diamonds in the game, without question. And also, like, stats-wise, he's good for a diamond, which is rare. Normally, you see with people like Giannis that are really just oversized, their stats are normally worse. So, like, Giannis Pink Diamond last year for Pink Diamond, I'm pretty sure his stats weren't great. <coughs> <coughs> but obviously, he played really well in game. So, Giannis actually has only 40 intangibles. So, you know what that means? This guy is a hidden opal. He's, uh, sorry, no. He, he's either hidden diamond or hidden pink diamond or hidden opal. 98 or 99. There's a good chance he's a hidden opal. So, he has got four Hall of Fame badges, fancy footwork, contact finisher, con consistent finisher, and relentless finisher, as well as nine gold badges, including clamps, which is great, and chase down artist. He's got 17 silver badges, including stop and go, defensive leader. He's got intimidator silver. The problem is that he doesn't have silver quick first step or even bronze. One of those badges would be just unbelievable. He has got 80, uh, an 80 post hook, 74 post fadeaway. That's not bad at all. He's got a decent mid-range shot, not a great three-point shot. He's got a really good driving dunk, got really good ball, or got decent ball handle. He's got good passing stats. He's got great block steal, great perimeter and interior defense, great rebounding stats, super speed, super ball acceleration, great lateral quickness. And they gave out this card a little bit too early. Like it was the very start of December last year when we got the Yanis Pink Diamond, the 97 overall one last year. But this card is as good as that card. I'm not going to lie. It is as good as last year's Pink Diamond Giannis. So, I think they gave us the Giannis a little bit early. I would have... I'm not complaining about getting the card. He's great for the team. But I would have hoped that we were going to get this Giannis maybe in maybe three weeks' time. would be probably a decent time from get uh, from to give us Giannis. But obviously, 2K want to make money. So, anyway, yep. That is Giannis. So, the team we're running with is Shea Gilgis Alexander at the 1. We're running Tyler Hero at the 2, who I really like. Running Clay Thompson at the three. At the four, we have got Giannis. At the five, we have got Tim Duncan. Off the bench, we have got Gilbert Arenas, the one. Terrence Ross, the two. Paul George, the three. LeBron, the four. Mike, at the five. With JoJo, JR, and Ray LaFrance surrounding off the bench. So, yep, this is the team we're running with. Now it's going to the hot zones and release for Giannis and Tedekumpo. And then we're going to get on to the game. So, Giannis has actually got hot zones nowhere outside the three, but most spots inside the three. His release, I have not used Giannis at all this year. His release is same as always i don't actually i don't know how to hop step in this game i'm not gonna lie i do not know how to hop step so that is something i'm gonna have to figure out so i because i know yeah i'm not gonna be the best player with yanis i'm not even gonna be close to being the best player with this card and seeing as we i didn't really think that the other yanis was anything spectacular the amethyst one but now we have a diamond i'm gonna to have to actually learn how to hop step which is probably the most overpowered i know it is once you get into a certain position it's the most overpowered move in the game but it's not something that you're gonna to get to in every single offense unless you're playing a terrible opponent but yeah so does he still have the glitchy crossover from last year not by the looks of it like last year was ridiculous with Giannis. it was like You'd run past the halfway line. You'd like run this side of the floor. And then all of a sudden you just bring your whole momentum to the other side of the floor. You get a speed boost and 
burn people every single time. He obviously doesn't have to cross over this year. He's Thon Maker had as well, but like less than he's less than 86 ball control. But yeah, he's still going to be quite good. Obviously, going to dunk really well. Going to the basket, he's going to be good. And most of all, he's going to be an unbelievable defender. He's going to be versatile. He's going to be able to guard pretty much everybody. And he's got really good length. So anyway, now it's just Green on 3. And now let's get on to the game. Okay, so we are playing against Mark Price, Harden, Blackman, um, Kevin Love, and Tim Duncan. Duncan's obviously really, really good. But we have a huge mismatch with Giannis if he's going to try to guard Giannis with Kevin Love. His bench got Trey Young, Kyrie... AD, Matumbo, and Bing, which is all right, but I think we definitely have the advantage bench-wise anyway. Giannis fakes up Kevin Love, or nope, just spins and shoots in his face. Take that, that was a nice enough move. I definitely, definitely, definitely did not mean to shoot that shot, though. Let's do a fake, and wait back to Duncan. We're good. Drew straight into the hands of Duncan. Right to the basket, Giannis spins in and gets the spin dunk. That is the fastest spin I've ever seen on a player. That's a terrible shot. And uh, that is Giannis's ball, who out-rebounds Tim Duncan, who may be one of the best rebounders in the game. Giannis dribbles down the floor, straight to the basket, gets the fake, and puts it up, and puts it in. Giannis with six points and a rebound to start the game. Throws straight into my hands. Giannis to the basket, puts up the layup, and draws the foul. Let's go. Giannis is torching these so far. And I'm not even, like, I'm not even a good person with Giannis. Like, imagine you give this card to, like, Tyler Debo or two-way Roko, the guy who won the PS4 qualifiers for 250k. Like, he's, like, the best player I've ever seen using Giannis. And, like, imagine giving him this card. Like, he's already qualified for 250k, but imagine him playing in the qualifier next weekend with this. It'd just be, un it'd just be unfair to anyone against him. That's easy. Just back him down and put up the layup. There's nine early points for Giannis. And they, he steals it, puts up the three, knocks it down. Why does he have glass cleaner takeover? Come on, 2K. Actually, for anything else would be very, very um, unfair. Um, just as we let him hit a three-pointer there with Mark Price. He just blows right by. He doesn't even need quick first step. He just runs straight to the basket and gets to finish over Kevin Love. Good block right there by Duncan. Giannis to the basket. Okay, we faked him into, we baited him into thinking we were going to shoot the mid-range there. And through two minutes, Giannis now has 16 points. Second board there for Giannis. Push it. He dribbles right through three of them to the basket with the dunk. This card is ridiculous. Like, this card is absolutely ridiculous. And I picked him for 200k. Which I know is a lot of MT, like, if you're on console, but on PC, that is, like, like 200k is the price of, like, diamonds. To the basket, Giannis, with the dunk again. We have a 20-5 to 5 lead after three minutes and every point from Giannis. He's too good. He is just straight up, he is too good. And Giannis forces the miss from the tumbo and gets the board. Straight to the basket. He goes right by coast to coast. Easy layup. This is just this is a joke, like. This is the most unstoppable card I have used this year. And he's just cleaning up on rebounds. Well, that's four rebounds from. Gets the crossover by Trey Young. By an off balling Trey Young and burns him. We have a 24 to 5 lead. All 24 points by Yanis. And he's gone. And that's a rage quit. That is the most, that is the craziest first quarter basketball. Normally when I score 24, 25 points, it's against a terrible team or a guy who literally can't play. That guy wasn't half bad. He was not half bad. So I am going to go and play a game of Triple Tread Online and use Giannis. He's, he's just a god. Okay, so we're playing Trey Young, Brogdon, and Ingram. I'm just being dead serious. Brogdon is one of the most underrated cards in the game. Like, he's a card I'm, you very, very rarely hear anyone talk about, but he's unbelievable. And Giannis runs right through them all. Puts up the layup, can't get it. I thought he was going to get the board there, though. Um, It's fine. Or, no. Oh, really? 
That's a good uh, dunk right there. And he stepped over him. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to uh, when we get a better Brandon Ingram card. Because it's going to happen. Especially if uh, Zion is injured. That's 100% smothered layup he made. Like if Zion's injured, it's a matter of when, not if, we get a better Brandon Ingram. Because he's going to have a few games where he just completely goes off. So, I'm looking forward to seeing the Diamond Ingram. Because that Amethyst is great. He just needs one or two things to be upgraded. Just be an absolute, like, God-tier card. Fade away leaner. Like, oh man, Yanis is another level. Like, he is straight up. He is another level. Mid-range, bad release. It doesn't matter. It goes in. This is crazy. Like, I'm talking about cards like Brandon Ingram and stuff. But there's Yanis. Yanis exists. He doesn't even need to be great. He just exists. And I know he, he can be a liability, Yanis. That's why I'm, I'd say 9 times out of 10, I'd probably take Paul George over Giannis. But in Triple Threat, I would 100% take Giannis. But, uh, and against a bad opponent, I'd take Giannis. But PG definitely, I think, is still that little bit more versatile. He does that a little bit more. And Giannis, in terms of shooting, still leaves a bit to be desired. But Giannis is unreal. He's unstoppable. They leave him wide open in the corner. For 3. He knocks it down. Oh, Giannis with the chase down block on Trey Young. Okay. Uh, he literally knocked that one almost out of the arena. That's unreal. Wait and get back to Young. That's fine. It's a good shot there by Brogdon. Brogdon's release is good. His pull-up is good. There's nothing that, that Brogdon can't do. Okay, back him down. Put up the hook. Easy two points for Giannis. Okay, we're right in there. And that's an easy layup. This guy is, as most people do, struggling to guard Giannis. That's way off. Nope, it's good. He has hit two whites with Malcolm Brogdon in a row, which means we are no longer in control of this game. Okay, he's giving Giannis way too much space there. You cannot back off Giannis. His animations are too glitchy. You gotta just predict. That's how you guard Giannis. You predict. It's off, it's off, it's off. And Giannis cleans up on the board. Straight line to the basket, puts up the layup, and puts it in. No fakes needed, no right stick needed. Whole turbo and runs straight to the basket. Okay, we got the switch we wanted. Malcolm Brogdon is going to have to try guard Giannis. Should not have picked up that dribble, though. Wide open three, green. Out pass from Giannis. There we go. He's not just a scorer. He can pass, he can play defense, he can do everything. Except shoot. Shooting is definitely not Giannis' strength. So, game-winning basket right here. Let's just ISO, see what he wants me to shoot. Wait till he comes out and spin in. Fake. That's how he's going to jump on that. And it's a great block by Ingram. Okay. Um, I thought he was going to over-predict right there. Which he obviously didn't. And we got to get a score here because he's going to score if I don't. Giannis is bullies. I'm under the basket. Oh, take the hook shot. There we go. That's off. Oh, damn. They're going to get a score here. Oh, nice move. Oh, he should have shot that. He has range extender. He should have definitely shot that. Some good defensive plays by Ingram. Which not a lot of people say. Okay, good board by Giannis in the break. He should be too, too good. Spin in. Spin through them. And Giannis with the game-winning dunk. So anyway, that is the video. Giannis is so, so good. That's all I'm going to say. Like, a top three or four card in the game without question. Like, purely in terms of, like, one-on-one -on -one ability, you can't really argue that there's anyone better than Giannis. The problem is that he does have a weakness, and it's that he can't shoot. I know, obviously, his strengths are greater than most people's strengths, but the thing is, is that you've got a guy like Paul George who has no weaknesses. Paul George doesn't. And I know Giannis is that little bit taller, glitchy animations, but Paul George is still really tall. So when I'm looking at best guys in the game, I got to look at Paul George before I look, toward, look at Giannis. But Giannis is still unbelievable. So pretty much if you guys are looking at ratings and 2KMT Central has 
uh, cards are listed by intangibles. So intangibles is basically a nothing stat. It doesn't actually do anything. Um, and all that intangibles does essentially is lowers or hires a player over players overall. And Yanis has got 40 intangibles, Paul George is 35. So as you guys can see, 94 overall, 92, 99 for Paul George, and then 97, 98 for Yanis. So Paul George, 35 intangibles, Yanis 40. LeBron James, who I don't have in this squad, has got 45 intangibles. Kevin Durant is 45 intangibles. And those are the four like diamonds that you look at them and say, okay, they are way, way better than all the other ones. Sorry, LeBron's here, Kevin Durant's on the squad, 98, 95. You're looking at them being like, they're way better than diamonds. And there's a reason, it's because they are. Those guys are way, way better than all the other diamonds in the game. They're realistically 97, 98 overall players, at least all four of those. And they are the four elite, elite cards you can buy in the game. And Tim Duncan as well. Tim Duncan is 97 with 25 intangibles, which means he is like a hidden, really good Galaxy Opal. But the Yanis, Paul George, LeBron and KD are the four standout small forwards anyway in the game. Anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.